1456. The city's plague doctor has just lost 50% of his population. He decides enough is enough and invents the plague door based on his belief that miasma, bad air, is the reason why we get sick. He separated the people who smell bad from the people who smell healthy. To protect himself, he wears one of these, which should come up very soon. But he fills the beak with fragrant herbs because good, hair, good air is supposed to protect him from bad air. Now he saves thousands of lives but loses his own simply because the paradigm that he uses to combat the disease is the wrong one. And it is only 200 years later that we invent the germ theory of diseases and it is 400 years later that we use it in antiseptic surgery to save millions of lives, including the lives of the surgeons. The idea here is very simple. The better paradigm leads to the better results. Now, let's fast forward to 2014. I am a data scientist, and my job is to teach students about the future of the web. I tell them that we generate two and a half quintillion bytes every day. That's the equivalent of two and a half million household computers. I tell them that to deal with this flood of data, we need machines to understand the content of the web. And I tell them that we have done so. We have a new paradigm which is called linked to data. The basic idea is that the first thing we do is extract knowledge from the web to create knowledge bases. Those are basically bubbles of knowledge. And then to make this knowledge interoperable, we connect the bubbles via linked discovery. I tell them that we've created this, that we can describe 3 billion things and more using more than 40 billion facts. And I tell them that this paradigm really works and that with that we were able to shorten data access time in cancer research from five days to five minutes. But when I leave the classroom, I wonder whether this paradigm is actually a dead end. And it's simply because if, you know, I to make, if I were to make the whole population of Dakar into data scientists and use the current paradigm, it would take us thousands of years to actually extract and link the knowledge available on the web currently, because this is less than 1% of the knowledge that we have available on the web nowadays. <laughs> So the question is, am I teaching the wrong paradigm? Am I being something like a plague doctor of data science? And if I am being a plague doctor of data science, what would a germ theory of data look like? Now, if you think about it, the problem in the equation is the humans. They are simply too slow. So what happens if we take them out of the equation? would then mean that data will have to do the work. It means that data would have to link and extract, but we consider data to be inert so far. So the question is, what if data were not inert? What if data could decide for itself? What if data could extract more data and link to more data? This change of paradigm leads to what I call digital life. Obviously, as a scientist, I have to check and test my theories. So we came up with a series of experiments to check whether this makes sense. The first question was, can data feed? So, for example, can the knowledge base of us news learn more about news simply by reading the news? And we actually checked that, and we figured out that if you teach knowledge bases how to discover patterns in human language, they can actually do so, i.e. learn new things with an accuracy above 90%. We then ask ourselves, can data bleed? And can we actually take care of the bleeding? I.e., can we fix problems in data? So far, the paradigm is a human has to fix the problems in data. You've all had to repair files on your computer, I guess. We looked into that by taking a data set 
cloning it several times and altering up to 50% of the content of the data set and we're able to show that data sets can learn how to connect with the data sets but also how to fix themselves if they contain errors. The third question was can data breed, can data actually find the right mating partner and we were able to show that by allowing data to display digital pheromones, basically a digital signature, they could actually find the right partner in more than 60% of the cases. Now, I'm not sure that this is the perfect paradigm, but if it were, it would basically mean that you could grow your own Wikipedia on your phone and you'll be different from the Wikipedia of the person sitting next to you simply because Wikipedia would learn what you need. It would mean that biomedical knowledge bases could generate hypotheses and actually ask researchers, could it be that a particular type of cancer has a particular prevalence for males of a particular region? Your chemistry knowledge base could actually tell you that what you just created most probably causes cancer and you should get out of the facilities. So basically, if this paradigm is the correct one, it would be something at the scale of what the first microscope was to microbiology, a lens into a new world. Thank you very much.